Just as God had said, Paro refused to listen. For three weeks, Moshe repeated his warning to no avail. Alas, Paro's heart proved to be hard as rock. It was now time to unleash the first plague against Egypt. Aharon, stretch your hand out over the Nile. Then, strike the river with your staff. Moshe, it's happening. The water is actually turning to blood. Not only did the Nile turn to blood, but every lake, pool, puddle, and pond became blood. No body of water in Egypt was spared. Before long, the second plague followed. One single giant frog invaded Egypt. Hey, it's a monster! Get it! Clobber it! Smash it! As the Egyptians attacked it, huge swarms of frogs erupted from its mouth, spreading everywhere. What's the matter? I got a frog in your throat? Ah! Give me the food! Give me the oven! There is the bread! Even Paro was not spared. After these two plagues, did Paro's heart soften? Rabbit. Not a bit. Not long after, Aharon once again used the staff of Moshe. This time, he struck the ground, causing a cloud of lights to rise up, spreading across Egypt. Egyptian men, women, even their animals are scratching away. In no time at all, the ground became covered in lice four feet deep. Even the river provided no relief. Mighty Paro, Moshe and Aaron have beaten us. We give up. Your Highness, this must be the finger of God at work. Finger of God? My foot. How dare you suggest that? No. These are all tricks. Tricks, I tell you. Now get out! Paro's continued stubbornness brought the next plague upon him. Wild animals swept over Egypt with a ferocity never seen before. Hordes of beasts tore up trees, crops, and gardens. There was no rest for the Egyptians by day or night. All right. All right, Moshe. You win. I will let you go on the condition that you Pray to your God to get rid of all these animals! Very well. I will do as you say. But once again, Paro broke his word. His heart became even harder to crack. Egypt would now suffer yet another plague. The Egyptian cattle suddenly became terribly ill and died. The camels that carried heavy loads died. The mighty oxen that pulled the plows died. And 
even the proud horses that pulled the royal chariots collapsed. The sixth plague came about when Moshe took in his fist a giant handful of furnace soot and threw it up to the sky. God turned it into a thick dust that spread all over Egypt, creating terrible boils upon the skin of the Egyptians and their animals. The boils developed into infectious blisters, destroying the Egyptian skin like fire and spreading across their bodies. The royal wizards, unable to do anything to stop the plague or duplicate it, could not even stand up due to the boils. The nerve of more afflicting us. Yeah, it's enough to make your blood boil. God then instructed Moshe to warn Paro of the next plague. Get out! This is ENN. Now for the weather. Forecast this week calls for ice cold, hail with what? Balls of burning fire inside freezing ice? Is this someone's idea of a joke? Flaming hail. It certainly was no joke. Looks like Moshe is really playing hardball now. The flaming hail smashed trees, wiped out crops, and obliterated every Egyptian garden and orchard. Enough, Moshe. The thunder and pounding hailstorms are driving me crazy. You can leave now. Just stop this plague. But once again, as soon as the plague was over, Paro was stubborn and refused to let the Jews go. What? What? What's that noise? So millions and millions of locusts fell upon Egypt, destroying everything in their path. Not a green leaf was to be seen in all of Egypt. The Egyptians themselves were attacked and stung by the merciless insects as the locusts invaded their homes in dreadful numbers. Even after all that, Paro did not let the Jews go. God commanded Moshe to stretch his hand to the sky, bringing a dense blanket of darkness to cover all of Egypt, except where the Jews lived. Hey, who turned out the lights? Uh, this shouldn't be happening. It's the middle of the day. For the first three days, it was so dark that Egyptians could not see in front of their faces. Who put that chair here? The next three days, the darkness became so thick that the Egyptians could not even move. They stood frozen in their positions. Mommy. Then, out of the darkness of the ninth plague, a light of reasoning entered Paro's stubborn heart. Enough! Go, go! Take your families and go worship your god. Just leave your animals. That's not possible, Paro. We'll need our animals also. Then no! Forget it! No deal! And with that last quick turn of defiance, Paro sealed his country's doom. As the day of God's tenth and final plague drew near. 
At midnight, on the 15th day of the Hebrew month of Nisan, the God of Israel will send a plague of such dread and horror that it will equal all the other plagues which have come so far. The tenth, last, and greatest plague of all will kill every firstborn Egyptian throughout this land. After that plague, you will not be so defiant. In fact, you will come to me and beg us to leave. Fellow Jews, I carry a very important message from God. For our freedom is only days away. Every family must take a lamb or goat on the 10th day of Nisan and keep it in their homes for four days. Then on the 14th of Nisan, the lamb shall be slaughtered, roasted whole, and eaten after nightfall with matzah and moror. It must be finished quickly before daybreak. In addition, you must smear some of the blood on your doorposts and the beam above the doorway. At midnight on the 14th, God brought the last plague upon Egypt. Moshe had said, this final plague killed all of the firstborn in the land. And true to the prophecy, God did, in fact, pass over the Jewish homes 